right, guys, this is what we've been waiting for. Hopefully you guys are ready. The SEC and the CTFC just charged a Coinbase employee with wire fraud conspiracy, wire fraud, and insider trading. Finally, the United States authorities are starting to take action against the corruption in the crypto space. But everybody is always innocent till proven guilty. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you a list of 100 different crypto projects that we've researched over the last couple of weeks. A lot of them are top 100 projects too, and I think 99% of them will fail and investors are going to lose billions. Ready? Let's dive deep. If we swing over to Bloomberg's website, we can see this article, X Coinbase Manager Arrested in US for Crypto Insider Trading. And if you guys stick around to the end of the video, I will show you guys exactly what I think that the SEC is using for criteria. And you're gonna be surprised at the amount of projects that most likely will be deemed securities. Federal prosecutors in Manhattan brought their first ever case for insider trading in digital coins, charging a former Coinbase Global Inc. product manager with leaking information to help his brother and friends buy tokens just before they were listed on the exchange. Asan Wahi helped oversee listings for Coinbase and his unit focused on investment products. Thursday arrests followed the sweeping probe involving the Southern District of New York and the Securities and Exchange Commission. The SEC also alleged that Wahi violated the agency's anti-fraud rules. Today's charges are a further reminder that Web3 is not a law-free zone. Manhattan U.S. District Attorney Damian Williams said in a statement, Our message with these charges is clear. Fraud is fraud, whether it occurs on the blockchain or on Wall Street. He also added that Coinbase had cooperated with the probe. Coinbase lets Americans trade more than 150 tokens, including many that have been added in recent months. Because of the platform's status as the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the United States, coins often see a rush of interest and a surge in price immediately after being listed on their exchange. Wahi also tipped off his brother Nakhil Wahi and their friend Samir when tokens were about to be listed on the Coinbase exchange, according to the charges filed on Thursday in New York. Nakhil Wahi and Ramir allegedly used the information to trade dozens of tokens at least from June of 2021 until April of 2022, and their estimated profits were around $1 million, the government said. Prosecutors charged the three men with wire fraud conspiracy, wire fraud, and the SEC also alleged them of insider trading. Andrew St. Lenart, an attorney for 32-year-old Hassan Wahi, declined to comment. 33-year-old Romani remains at large according to the U.S. Attorney's Office. Pyra Chaudhry, a lawyer for 26-year-old Dakil Wahim, who was also arrested, said in a statement that her client didn't do anything wrong. These prosecutors are trying to criminalize innocent behavior because they are looking for a scapegoat because of how much money people have lost in cryptocurrency recently. Chaudhry also went on to say that the government is embarrassed and arresting Nakhil Wahi is a knee-jerk reaction to save face. I mean, I'm no lawyer, but I can't imagine calling the United States federal government an embarrassment is going to help your case. Coinbase Chief Legal Officer Paul Goral stated that any illicit behavior is something that we take super seriously. We have zero tolerance for it. Graul also said Coinbase immediately conducted an investigation after learning of the potential insider trading issues and put Wahim on unpaid administrator leave and Wahi was also officially fired on July 15th. And what's really crazy about this is the fact that the SEC didn't bring charges against the issuers of the token. For example, AMP token launch, they called AMP a security, but they didn't bring charges against AMP. If they did, then AMP could fight the charge and try to say that AMP is not a security. It would get tied up in court for years and the SEC wouldn't be able to charge people for insider trading if the asset is technically not deemed a security. Now that these assets are securities, not only are they able to come after people for insider trading, but they're now also able to come after influencers who promoted those projects because when you are a public figure, it is illegal to promote registered securities. So this industry is about to get shook up really quick, guys. It's pretty scary. I went through and recently cleaned up my entire channel, and this is what I'm talking about. The more I started to understand what I was actually doing, we are operating in such a gray area. But if these projects were deemed securities from the very beginning, from the time that they launched, promoting them, I assume is highly illegal, but don't quote me on that. We might really start to see a lot less of those 100x moonshot videos. The indictment. The indictment Manhattan prosecutor launched their investigation in April after complaints surfaced on social media about unusually well-timed investments into these tokens that were listed onto Coinbase. The probe gained steam in mid-May when authorities prevented Wahim from leaving the country. 
According to prosecutors, Coinbase arranged for an interview on May 16th with Wahim in Seattle as part of their internal investigation into the suspicious trading activity. And guess what our boy Wahim did the night before? The night before, Wahim bought a one-way ticket flight for New Delhi, scheduled to leave in 11 hours. The next day, 35 minutes before the interview was scheduled to begin, Wahim emailed Coinbase Director of Security Operations to say, that he had to fly back home, but the meeting could be rescheduled, according to the indictment. In that 11-hour period, Wahim called and texted his brother and Rami, sending them images of the messages that he had received from Coinbase's internal security direct. Law enforcement agents showed up at the airport before Wahim could board his flight. Despite his apparent willingness to reschedule the meeting for later in the week or the following week, his luggage told a different story. Check out what Wahi brought to the airport with him. According to the story, an extensive array of belongings, among other items, three large suitcases, seven electronic devices, two passports, multiple other forms of identification, and hundreds of dollars in US currency, along with a lot of other personal effects, according to the filing. Prosecutors also said at an initial court appearance in Seattle on Thursday afternoon that the government isn't seeking detention ahead of Wahim's trial. They are agreeing to remote monitoring as a part of the $1 million bail package he paid using his Robinhood account. Now on to the SEC complaint. The SEC complaint that's filed Thursday in federal court in Seattle alleges that Hassan Waki violated security laws by repeatedly providing materials like non-public information to his brother and friends by text and phone calls using a foreign phone. The agency said its case against Waki's brother and Rami was its first for cryptocurrency insider trading. Naki Wahim repeatedly traded on that information. They were reckless or they continuously avoided knowing that Hassan's breaching his duty of care to Coinbase by providing them with this information, according to the complaint. The market regulators asked the court to order them to pay civil penalties and it was an unspecified amount. The SEC said that it was also deeming nine of the digital tokens that the men traded to be securities as an important distinction for the agency as they continue to assert their authority over the volatile digital asset market. The SEC Enforcement Director Garal said in a statement that we are not concerned about labels, but rather the economic realities of these offerings. In this case, these realities affirm that the number of crypto assets issued were securities, and, as alleged, the defendants engaged in typical insider trading ahead of their listings on Coinbase. Coinbase had policies in place to restrict employees from trading or tipping off their hand based on confidential information, according to the SEC. In April, Coinbase Chief Executive Officer Brian Armstrong said in a blog post that the company had received reports of people appearing to buy certain assets right before they were announced to be listed. But without providing specific examples, Armstrong added that there's a chance that someone at the firm could leak information to outsiders and that it would hunt for misconduct and make referrals to the authorities for a possible prosecution if they found anything. American officials have been stepping up their oversight of the industry, which they often say operates in a legal gray area. Insider trading is seen as a particular problem. After years of taking a relatively cautious approach to the listing of tokens, Coinbase made their decision last year to significantly increase that number to take back some of the market share that it lost to competitors. While Coinbase was not charged, the cases could lead to additional scrutiny for the platform. In a press release, the U.S. attorney credited the company for cooperation in the investigation. So now let's talk about how the SEC is deeming what is a security and what is not a security. Now. I don't know any of this for fact, but this is what it looks like to me. If we swing over to Google and I do a simple search on a project like how did Cosmos Adam raise funds? I can see in 2017, the ICF held a two week ICO for the Adam token raising $17 million. So if you take a look at this list, you can see if I say swipe left, that means that you could not pay me to own this token. If you gave it to me, I would immediately sell it and go into a stable coin right now. Hard pass means that maybe, just maybe, the project might do something, but I still wouldn't ever touch it. Pass means it's probably shillable. They got a decent sized market cap, a legit team or a legit ish team, but I still wouldn't touch it. I don't, I don't even know how to say it, guys. I wouldn't touch anything that's proof of stake. It's just really that simple. Why? Because almost every proof of stake project did a pre mine. There was some amount of tokens that were mined or distributed in the very beginning, set aside for team members. And if that is so, 
If you did a pre-mine or if you did an ICO, you will most likely be deemed a unregistered security. We can see Algorand had a pre-mine, Celo had a pre-mine, Chai CXXCH had a pre-mine. We went through last night and checked out the SEC Banhammer. These are projects that the SEC just deemed securities. And what's crazy about those tokens is a lot of them didn't even have GitHubs. I mean, there was no evidence that the project was even doing any building or trying to build or from an outside perspective, and this is just my opinion, it looked like the projects were just, I I, I don't really know. I, un, I would be very, it's just crazy guys. I don't know what to think, man. I don't know what I can legally say and what I can't legally say because of everything that's happened over the last couple of weeks. But just know if you guys are interested in coming and actually learning more about how I actually investigate these projects in the live streams, and I can show you guys what evidence I'm looking at that points towards a majority of the projects launched in this industry being securities. If you just do a simple Google Google search and you see the word ICO that the product raised initial funding through an ICO. How stocks are launched, I believe, publicly traded companies, they call it IPO, an initial public offering. The crypto space back in 2017, I think was trying to go, hey, well, we won't call it an IPO, we'll call it an ICO, an initial coin offering. And that way it won't be a security because if we do an IPO, we're technically quote unquote a security. And until now, the industry's operated in this very, very gray area. Now, I don't know if they're gonna be coming after influencers like myself because we maybe made price prediction videos on these projects and it's highly illegal to promote. It's highly illegal to promote securities. Now that AMP is legal as a security, I almost think that YouTube could possibly shut your channel down. If you have videos that are talking about it, you have to disclose how many coins you own. You have to, the way you talk about that asset, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Like, I don't think I can just go tell you guys to buy Tesla stock right now. I think that's definitely illegal. Do your research, guys. This bear market's most likely just getting started. If we're talking about these exchanges being forced to unlist all these unregistered securities, man, could you imagine if they did this because Ethereum was pre-mined? And if Ethereum gets deemed as an unregistered security, I believe that they could force Coinbase and all these big major exchanges to delist these assets. Like, I don't think it's going to be good whether the merge takes place or not. And then especially after the merge, then you don't even have the factor of quote unquote being decentralized because the amount of coins that you own dictate your voting power in the network. Drop some comments below. Let me know what you guys think. Love you guys. Hey, you. Are you interested in learning more about how to investigate rug pulls, how to do background research in developers, or how to read GitHub so you can prevent yourself from buying into these rug pulls and Ponzi schemes? Do me a favor, come join us live on my second YouTube channel. We break down about 10 to 20 projects every night. You guys bring the coins, drop them in the chat, we'll research them together. And don't forget to check out my Kadena playlist. This one blockchain is gonna change every aspect of life as we know it.